I'm not really one to buy a game twice. <laughs> I can't even say that with a straight face. Of course, there are a bunch of games that I bought several times over. Final Fantasy VI, three times. You guys saw my review of Payday 2? I bought that game twice. Heck, let's even talk about Street Fighter IV, where I bought the first iteration of that game three times, two of them at launch. I am obviously crazy about this type of game collecting. But what about a double dip of a game that came out two and a half years ago? Sleeping Dogs Definitive Edition is a high-definition re-release of a game that came out a little over two years ago. For those not living under a rock, you are Wei Shen, Chinese gangster trying to make a score. He gets arrested after he tries to escape from the police during a botched deal, only for you to find out he is actually Wei Shen, undercover cop. His mission is to infiltrate a particular gang of triads and dissolve them from the inside. The game takes the best of two worlds, Hong Kong movies and GTA style gameplay. It also helps that the hand-to-hand -hand combat engine in this game is pretty awesome. The story is really what drew me in. The character of Wei Shen is quite complex. I won't go into his background much, as most of it is in the blurbs mentioned in the cell phone records that you can read. His allegiances to both the police and the Sun On Yi, the triad gang he infiltrates, both get tested as he goes through trials, makes new contacts, and watches friends come and go, some of them even permanently. The open world environment is actually pretty cool. One of the biggest problems an open world can have is that the whole mass can look really similar, and so I end up getting lost more often than not. Sleeping Dogs never has that problem. Granted, it helps that the map has a great GPS system that gives you an idea of how to get to your destination, but as you get used to landmarks and the vehicles that you either buy, steal, or gain through missions, you learn the nuances of traveling through the world, and eventually, the fastest ways to get there. Of course, I can't talk about sleeping dogs without talking about the combat system. While it doesn't flow as well as, say, Batman Arkham City, it works pretty well overall. You get new moves and abilities as you level up the different skill trees, for lack of a different term, which allows you to take out your opponent in more creative ways. That is, if you don't find a power junction box or a phone booth to kick your target into. The big advantage of a definitive edition is that you get all the downloadable content that had been released since launch. Most of it consists of different outfits that give extra boosts here and there, but there are a few cop missions that will help out your police skill tree, and there is a mission that will give you a crazy car that comes with its own EMP system. And Gatling guns. Yes, Gatling guns. You'll also get the Nightmare in North Point and Year of the Snake chapters, so you get to extend the gameplay even further without having to spend an extra dime. When I got Sleeping Dogs on the Xbox 360 for free through their Games with Gold promotion, it was the game that tided me over until Grand Theft Auto V. I even went out and bought some of the DLC that added on to the game. So I obviously felt it was worth my cash and my time to play. So what was I annoyed with? For a definitive edition, I really couldn't see the remastering. Granted, there were a few parts where the newer, cleaner graphics came into play, but as for the audio and most of the city, all I really saw was a mostly shiny look on the characters and a few backgrounds. It wasn't bad, but it wasn't exactly the jumping graphics that I was expecting. 
Sleeping Dogs also doesn't address one of the biggest issues I had since the original, upgrading the triad tree. It was relatively easy to completely finish the police and phase trees, as there are enough races, random missions, and cop cases to get those two finished. But without replaying missions, I could never get the triad tree full. I was really disappointed to find out that the DLC only added more cop missions, which just filled the cop tree out even faster. More triad missions would have helped, even if you could boost the triad score with the right outfits. Sleeping Dogs, much like Grand Theft Auto V, isn't perfect. It's just great in its own regard. It has a few issues it still needs to address, but I thought that the overall package was worthwhile to get. But in order to get it, you have to spend it. And I think you know the question I'm about to ask. Is the definitive edition of Sleeping Dogs worth your cash? Sleeping Dogs Definitive Edition retailed for 60 bucks when it was released on the Xbox One, PlayStation 4, and PC. The PlayStation 4 version I got for the box, and eventual play, was around $35. I bought the Steam version that I got all the footage from, hence the Xbox 360 button and keyboard key guides that you see here, on sale for $7.49. While certainly a bargain, it's definitely worth more than that. Searching online seems to divulge a range between 30 and 50 bucks, and I really think 35 is where you should aim for. It's an older game, and for those who spent money on the original older versions, especially if you bought the DLC afterwards, the visual upgrade isn't worth any higher cost. Like I said at the beginning, I am absolutely crazy about this kind of games collecting. I even went and bought this game twice, just for the box. But as you know, anything that comes out of a box immediately gets over. I don't even own a PlayStation 4 at this point, but I wanted to show my support for the next generation system of my choice for the larger titles, even if I don't actually own the thing. So, since I don't have a set schedule, where should I go next? Should I play a double dip of a game where every choice you make has a consequence? Or should I play a game where gigantic alien beings of metal and energy collide with planetary survival hanging in the balance? That's a sweeter pork than this. Tasu Bao is more sweet and sour pork. And by itself, this is more of a pork and scallion and onion and other stuff dumpling. I mean, it's. There's, there's more green in this thing than I remember. 